Hi there, today we are going to the Oxford Market Antiques. This is located in Oxford, Pennsylvania. It is on the way home from Avalon, and that was a Goodwill that I went to. I dropped that video, I think, on Saturday, and so I decided to stop in here, and I was looking for owl items, but I came across these bird items. It's a salt and pepper shaker set, very, very kitschy, super cute, and I am part of a kitsch crew train on whatnot, in November and I thought these would be perfect for the kitsch crew train. How kitschy are these? They were in super great shape so I decided to get those and then they have a small section here and these are all smalls and all the smalls are two dollars a piece. I will put a link to a previous video that I have done here. Um, I think I've done maybe two previous videos um, of this store and one video is just entirely of the smalls. <laughs> And I am, again, looking for owls because we are having an upcoming owl train on whatnot that is being ho hosted by Yvonne, now th Thrifty Rich. Now that, it was an owl, but it was an owl doctor, and I was looking for something more anthropomorphic, not really an anthropomorphic doctor. I hadn't been here in a while, so I was really looking forward to seeing what new items they have. And I'm going to probably play a little bit of music here while we look at the store. Next to the smalls section, they have a cabinet that has these really cute figurines in it. That was a really cute owl. That's the kind of owl I was looking for, but the price just wasn't right for me. These were really sweet. Those were gobel cats and other figurines. They have everything priced. It's easy to see how much things are. That owl on the right there was a Beatrix Potter figurine. I know I had, and then look, that's the rabbit, Lennox rabbit. I sold the boy Lennox rabbit on a whatnot sale. I know I had a viewer ask me to pick up Beatrix Potter figurines if I ever see them. And I did think of her, but that price was a little bit too high of a buy-in for me. I am on the thrifty side. <laughs> they also have a jewelry section. That was $22. That reminds me of Whiting and Davis purses with the chain, that linky stuff. I'm not quite sure what it's called. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments the correct name of that. This cat figurine was super neat, how it was all stretched out and long. We are on the right side of the store. You enter in the middle and then it splits off to the right and left and we're exploring the back of the right side. This is very interesting, all of this glass that we have here. And it's interesting because coming up, I'm gonna show something that broke on its own probably five minutes after I was looking over here. I didn't do it, no one was over there. It was very mysterious, but that elephant was very, very neat. I really, really like that. And then I'm putting that bird back. I move the bird to get to the glass. They always have really pretty glass in this case. This blue dish caught my eye. There was a sticker on it. It probably said it was made in Italy. I couldn't really read it. That was only $9. Is a very nice piece but I was determined to find some owls and I think I touched the piece that broke but I didn't break it oh I do I point to it watch this piece right here how I was like oh that's so pretty and then when I was over on the other side of the store uh, the employee and I heard this crack and he walked over there and he said I don't believe it this just broke it was so weird because it wasn't cold in the store it wasn't hot in the store it wasn't like there was a temperature change it was very very strange i'm just glad it didn't happen while i was nearby because then i feel like oh no what did i do i just touched the rim of it maybe i have a very strong finger <laughs> they have always have a neat display like uh like i said they have like the, the paperweights together they'll have certain items kind of displayed together thematically they had some pigs over there these were really pretty these reminded me of the jade trees it was just a, a a stalk of flowers as you can see that was $24 when I go with Jocelyn this is her favorite area I think to go to because she kind of makes a beeline for this area and she has found some beautiful pieces of glass and pottery over here 
my favorite part of this store is on the left side and we are going to go explore that in just a little bit but first i wanted to show you around this room to see all the beautiful glass items that they have they have it curated so nice in here this was a sweet little hat i've sold this before that's daisy and buttons not sure who the maker is because that was a very common pattern and it did not glow. I don't think it glowed. This definitely definitely glowed because they had a black light underneath. I think that is a superb way of selling glowy green glass by putting the glow light underneath wherever you're displaying it. So then your customer knows automatically that it is going to glow. I thought this piece of pottery was very nice. This is Raku pottery. You usually know it's Raku pottery because the bottom is a dark black color. Sometimes you will see patterns uh, burned, quote unquote, burned into the pottery, horsehair, other items, and that's part of the raku pottery process. I'm not an expert; it's I'm learning as I go. But that is a very neat uh, style of pottery, and I re I really like the looks of it. Here was a kitty cat. These always remind me of Kate. Follow that bug vintage. She loves cats, but I have some cats. Cats are easy. Like, see, here's another one. Cats are easy to find. The things that I am looking for now, I'm looking for raccoons and owls. And the joke between Kate and me is I'm looking for iguanas because I'm having an imaginary iguana sale <laughs> on whatnot. I'm, I'm always telling her, I'm going to have an, an upcoming iguana sale. I just have to collect the iguanas first. <laughs> Such an obscure animal to have a train. I could invite other people to sell their iguanas. I don't know if I get a lot of people on my train. This was super cute. This little kitschy little piece here with the, the elf or the leprechaun. It was $14. I couldn't tell if it was a hobbyist piece or not. What do you think? Do you think that was a hobbyist piece? I It kind of had a hobbyist piece vibes, but then it also painted to look like an authentic 50s piece. I'm not quite sure. We are still on the right side, but the front of the store here, and they always have dolls in that little bookshelf, and then they have a lot of art, and it's fun to poke around on the shelves because you never know what you're going to find. That horseback rider reminded me of someone from Mongolia. I don't know. It, I, it wasn't quite, there was a stink bug. Did you see a stink bug in the bottom of the candlestick? Stink bugs get everywhere. But that horse rider uh, reminded me of a Mongolian piece. I could be wrong. That's just what the first vibe that I got from it. This was enamel on copper. It was a box. And usually you see them as trinket dishes. I found one as a switch plate cover. But the box itself had a lot of wear. The wooden part. So that is why I did not get that. These dolls are so pretty. I love the style of those posable dolls. And then here is what more of the front of the store is. And we walked in through that, that little doorway there just to give you the lay of the land. Here I am looking at the Bakelite silverware. I'm looking for unusual utensil pieces. They just had knives and forks and spoons. I thought the red was an unusual color and I wasn't quite sure if that was Bakelite. That had sparkles in it, so I would guess not, but uh, that's what I was looking for, unusual utensils in Bakelite. And then I like looking in this corner of the store I found some really pretty glass here. I got out my light to see if this piece glowed. It glowed a little tiny bit, mostly on the base. And then I was seeing if anything else glowed since I had my light out. Again, still, still searching for the owls. This was neat. This duck, very, very tall and, and, and in good shape. I was checking to see if the beak was broken. This is very heavy and very tall. So I decided not to get that, but I, I did stop to admire it. Here was kind of a stretch glass face and clear. And let's see if there's anything else. I don't really, I think I pick up some pieces to look at them, but there was nothing in this room that I uh, picked up for purchase. I saved my purchases for the area of the store that everything is $4 or it's two for $7. And I really enjoy poking around in those shelves because you can actually find some good deals in that area. But first we're gonna finish up looking at the items in this room.
right before I got to the uh, two for seven dollar area, I saw this wall pocket and I love wall pockets. And here's a real close up <laughs> of my hand. Sorry about that. I w um, liked how it looked like a little drawstring bag and I was carefully putting it back on the wall. All right, here we are. Any item, $4 or two, four, seven dollars And like I said, I hadn't been here in quite a while. So I was very excited about what items I would find on these steel of a deal shelves. Some of the items here have a little bit of damage to them. That is why they're, I think they're being sold at a, a lesser price than the rest of the store. But like I said, you can always search and find some really great things that are still in great shape like that car, <laughs> the little bug. And here was an Anna Lee sheep. I really like the Anna Lee Halloween items. Some Anna Lees go just like most things. Some things go for high money and some things don't. And I decided against the, the little St. This is like St. Patrick's Day with those uh, shamrocks around the feet of it. And here I'm giving you a look at what we're, what we're gonna look up close. Um, they have a whole doll area. I didn't really look at that doll area. I found quite a few items here. A little sleeping cat. It looks like you could kind of have it peek over, <laughs> a little angry, peek over your your shelf. And here was a Kokeshi doll. I've had three, I recently had three Kokeshi dolls for sale in my eBay store, and I've sold two out of the three, which I was very excited about. I thought this was a very sweet cat with a little baby cat sitting there. And then look at the green eyed guy, this creamer. I thought this is delightful. Of course there's surface wear, but it does have age. But that was very nice. And then up top, there was a blue kitten. But that was more of a, well it is, it's marked 1973. That was a hobbyist piece. Had a little bit of damage to the ear. So that's why that stayed there. And this I felt was a lid and it was missing the base. And I would guess that this is Fitz and Floyd, but I am not 100% sure. I don't know what's going on with this kid. He's losing his drawers and he has his his uh, toy gun sling, slung around his hips. I put some, I put the pitcher and the cat up at the front counter. And then while I was walking by, uh, they have the jewelry section that is also uh, two for $7 or $4 a piece. And I am... Uh, more aware of bangle bracelets because of Kate and I was looking to see if they had any bangle bracelets and they had quite a bit of jewelry and they they did have bracelets but not bangle ones and so that's what I'm kind of looking for her to see if there's anything I could text her and you say are you interested in this but I didn't really see anything that made me uh, think of her that she likes she really likes Bakelite and those really bright colored bracelets so after I was looking here that was pretty, the blue. And checking out the necklaces. I do sell some jewelry on my whatnot. And I also list some jewelry on eBay. But for the most part, it's not a huge high seller for me. But I still like looking at it. This was a 12 Days of Christmas bracelet. Usually these are um, pictures of saints or the Virgin Mary. So I thought that was kind of neat that it was the 12 Days of Christmas. Checking that bracelet out. She might have liked that bracelet. I don't know, when she comes to the area next time, uh, hopefully I could bring her here and she might enjoy coming to this store. Then I picked this up because the thrifting twins, the joke is that they have an artisan Rinconada factory in their basement because they are always able to find artisan Rinconada. And if you know that style, it's usually brightly colored, but that fox definitely had the look of artisan Rinconada. It probably is a South American maker but that is why I was drawn to that because I, I like to tease them that they have a factory in their basement. That's why they always find all those figurines. I was looking to see if this was fire and light <laughs> I because I picked up that yellow butterfly that Yvonne said, hey, that's fire and light. And it was signed on the, the side of the body. That one was not. The butterfly was not. I thought that cat was neat, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. I don't know if it was a pin in its last life or a hanger of some sort. They have really pretty glass in the window, which is nice because the sun shines through and you can see the bright colors of it. I've picked up some really nice uranium glass here in the past, but that was a nice piece, probably a lid of some sort. 
And then this blue piece caught my attention. It looked like it was part of something else. Like I said, you can find some really nice things, but there's a little bit of damage or a missing piece or something like that. I've sold those before, those ceramic roses. I actually have some roses left, but they're very, very chipped. So I did sell the ones that were a nicer shape on whatnot. Then over here, I noticed that there was more Bakelite. So I was seeing, look at that knife. That's a really nice knife. I was seeing if there were any other, you know, like I said, unusual cooking utensils. But I think they, they were just knives in that little jar there. They have a two for four, two for seven section of boxes and bottles. More like people like to call them antiques. Hardware. My mom would like that area. She likes looking at hardware, old hardware stores. Then they have a dish section in the area. Is there anything that I passed by that you would have picked up? I always like to hear what other people see that I don't see. Something might catch your eye. Now we're going towards the back again. Those records look like fun. I don't know how to ship records. That reminded me of my childhood. We used to have red records. An Ethel Merman set. Annie, get your gun. If you sell records, if you could tell me how you pack them and ship them, because I've ordered records off of Amazon and they just come, it seems like in a cardboard sleeve and I don't, I would be too nervous. And another thing I'm nervous about, oh, I almost picked up this. I thought this was a Christ cat, but I'm not quite sure if it was or not, um, but it had, oh, it was so damaged and repaired. Christ usually has those bejeweled eyes. Anyway, uh, another idea I have for an upcoming whatnot sale is a Christmas ornament sale because you will see in an upcoming video. Oh, we're going to pause for a second because look, look what I found. She is mad. And so is he. Now you turn him around and look, he's happy. And she's still mad. No, <laughs> she's happy too. I thought those were very kitschy, very fun. Uh, I am thinking of having an upcoming sale on whatnot of Christmas ornaments. I've been collecting a whole bunch of shiny, bright, and old vintage ornaments like that, but it makes me nervous to ship them. I've talked to Sandy of My Flippin' Van Life, how she packs her ornaments. It seems pretty straightforward. I have packed lots of delicate items in the past. I do have confidence in my packing abilities, and so I think I just need to put my big girl pants on <laughs> and just have the sale. I think people would really enjoy that, especially with the holidays coming up. I like to decorate our Christmas tree with my mother-in-law's old ornaments. It's so pretty. The colors are so nice. So that is um, an upcoming whatnot sale, probably most likely in November. I thought that cat looked like Laurel Birch. Definitely had the look, but it was not signed. So if you have, if you are a reseller, I have a lot of comments and questions for you in this video but if you are a reseller and you have packed up christmas ornaments oh i missed the flower frog oh darn the green flower frog there anyway if you have packed up christmas ornaments if you could let me know how you pack them up and maybe i will get an idea and a little bit more confidence in packing them as well i'm so used to packing you know if a teapot you put uh, paper inside it and then you don't have to worry about it breaking it an ornament you can't really stuff paper in it all right, this is going to wrap up our trip here to Oxford Antiques. If you are ever in the area, you can go down to Avondale to the Goodwill and then over to Oxford to this store. They're only open Thursday through Sunday, though, and it's a nice, also, they have a nice market across the street, the parking lot, so be sure and visit that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you are still subscribed to my channel. I know I've had some people reach out to me saying YouTube had unsubscribed them. I hope you are content as Susie is snoozing in the bed. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care and I'll see ya.